Hey YouTube, The Reefer here. In today's video, we are gonna look at the 75 gallon and where it's at right now and where I hope to have it in a week. So as you can see, it is half filled with water. I do have some rock work here. I didn't order too much rock and that's because I found in the 93 gallon. To me, it seems like maybe there was a bit too much rock and not enough room for things to grow. So what I did do is I have a cave here for some fish, small cave here, and I'm actually gonna be moving a rock from the invert quarantine tank into here, uh, over here. So it's gonna provide one more cave. I think the caves will be good for any future fish. Uh, so some of the benefits of moving that rock that's already been cycled and is pretty much live rock into this tank is that it's going to help jumpstart this tank in terms of getting the organisms that we want into this tank and also the bacteria and stuff. So what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to focus on uh, what I consider the three most important things when you're keeping a successful reef tank. So you need proper lighting, you're going to need proper flow, and then some form of nutrient export. And then there's a fourth that's kind of down the road, is how are you going to maintain your um, parameters in the tank. So alkalinity, magnesium, calcium and salinity. So let's start with lighting. So this is a four bulb tech light fixture. Uh, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. So I got it for $60. It came with four bulbs. I'm not sure how old the bulbs are. I wouldn't be surprised if they're past their shelf life. So I will be replacing them in a week when I head down to Vancouver. I will get some new bulbs. So that's lighting. I'm very excited about trying out T5s because all the time I've spent in the hobby I've only used LEDs and those are the LEDs on the 93 gallon, so over here. And one of my frustrations with LEDs is a lot of them come in the puck form and then you don't get that spread, that coverage that you really want. You know, so things end up being shaded and all that. I'm really hoping the T5s will kind of prevent that. So next thing I'd like to talk about is flow. I don't have any power heads and one of the things with this build is I was trying to keep it as um, cost-effective as possible so um, I will be getting more equipment for it down the road but right now I was trying to just use stuff that I have around sitting around and I do have this FX6 that I have been using or that I was using for the 75 gallon when it was a freshwater tank so you can see here it's currently empty I have the media sitting out in my carport and it was soaking in vinegar for like a few days and now I, I've just, um, I'm soaking in RODI water hopefully just to get rid of some of that vinegar and get the pH back up. But my understanding with the vinegar is that um, soaking anything in vinegar, the vinegar solution will help draw out any phosphates that are actually in the media. So for now, that's gonna be my source of flow. And this FX6, if I had it going at full blast, believe me, it's, it's a ton of flow. Because this is gonna be primarily an LPS tank, it's not gonna need as much flow. So I will crank it down a little bit. So we've covered lighting, we've covered flow. Last thing is nutrient export. So when I say nutrients, I'm really talking about nitrates and phosphates. And what I'm gonna be using is my protein skimmer. 
So I'm gonna c combine the protein skimmer with a bacteria-based product. It's called Protobio. Now, anytime you're using anything that is bacteria related, so this includes carbon dosing, or in this case, the Protobio, you wanna make sure you have a protein skimmer because the protein skimmer is actually gonna skim all that extra bacteria out of your tank. If you do not have a protein skimmer and you try to carbon dose or um, add anything that's gonna uh, make cause your bacteria population to explode in your tank, you're probably gonna kill your tank. So please be really careful with that. Okay, so um, the last thing is that I don't currently have an ATO for this tank. Tony, well, a fellow reefer kind of mentioned that I might want to consider just using a my doser to dose calc, and hopefully that will be able to keep up with the evaporation. I haven't ordered it yet, but I will be ordering a DP4. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, last thing I forgot to mention, when you look at this tank, you're probably thinking, why is there such a big space on the right side? And the reason is that I am gonna, I think, put a few frag racks here made of egg crate. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's just no space in the 93 gallon for me to do that. And I, I do have some things that are a bit overgrown. I would like to cut them back a bit. So, um, yeah, having frags never hurts. Oh, last thing guys, I did get this, it's called a Tefo. It's, it's an aquarium controller. Like I said, I want to keep the cost down. Getting a seven, eight hundred dollar Apex is not really something I'm very interested in doing. The only thing with this is that I'm not really good with technology, but my understanding after I'd ordered this was that I could actually get a power bar that I could control from my phone. And then to control my heaters, I could have just bought a $40 unit that would have controlled the heaters. So I'm, the only benefit I could see from this, and I don't even know if this does it, is that if, if it keeps track of, say, even the temperature in this tank, uh, that is kind of useful information. But again, I'm not sure if they're doing it. I'm not sure if... I haven't set this up at all. I, I just unboxed it and I was like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> so on to the new frags I got. That's pretty much it. Um, so the only other thing I'd like to show you guys is I've already kind of jumped the gun and gone ahead and purchased a bunch of frags for this tank. So this is my coral quarantine tank, guys. And as you can see, I did go a bit acan crazy. I got a good assortment, I think. Uh, these two over here, they, they look really bad uh, when the shipment first showed up. Uh, and this one at the end, I actually didn't think would survive the night. But now they look fine. And this kind of goes back to what I said in a previous video. And I will be doing a video of what I consider maybe top five beginner coral. If you're a beginner, you should really consider Acan Lords or some people might call them Micro Lords. In my experience and just from reading online, these are an incredibly hardy coral. and they're absolutely beautiful. You can feed them so they're interactive. They're, they're pretty much everything you want from a coral. Uh, the only thing is maybe they're not as wavy as the Euphilia.
they come in a multitude of colors. These are just your basic lords. So nothing, no type of like ultra lord or anything like that. They're nice. I also got a, that's an orange chalice in the back there. I'm not sure what, he doesn't look very fleshy, so I'm not sure what type of chalice he is. And then I finally got another blasto colony. I mean, not colony, but another type of blasto. Based on the size, well, actually, some of these heads do look pretty big. I was gonna say, uh, I think this might be a Merletti like my other one, but it could be a Wellsy. So for those of you who don't know Blastos, there are two types of Blastos. The Merletti's, like those really tiny ones, and then Wellsies are much larger. And there's a tiny little mushroom that I've had in this tank for a long time, and I should really move him. No space in the 93 gallon, but once the 75 is up, I think I'll, I'll move him over there. I do have two snails in this tank, uh, a big snail and a baby snail. So these are trochuses. And, you know, I'm not sure what happened because I received seven. I, it's, it must be my fault. I, I think I probably didn't acclimate them properly. And I threw them in there, and I think one one seemed dead, but the others seemed to be moving. And before long, I only have one left. So that's too bad. I, I think these guys have actually been in quarantine for... It must be close to 45 days if it hasn't already been 45 days. So the only consolation prize I have is that I do have a baby trochus in there. So baby did sneak into my order. And he's very active. I Every time I watch the tank, I can find him, except for now. But oh well. So Acan Garden, I'm going the 75. The 75 is gonna be primarily LPS. And in the Fragrax, uh, I'll probably have some SPS in there but I won't be putting any SPS in until I get my dosing pump. So things are coming along. Anyways, uh, that's it for me guys. So short updates. Thanks for watching. Next week, I think I'll do another update on the 75 because uh, things are progressing and there's gonna be a lot of change. And, um, the week after is going to be, again, the April update of the 93 gallon. So thanks a lot for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.